I just watched this anime called High Card, the first episode of it. I had literally never heard of this before, which is rare because I do a thing every season where I talk about every single anime that's coming out. So people were talking about, oh, High Card, it's really good. And I'm like, what the fuck is High Card? That's not a thing. Um, turns out my anime list um, counted it for fall, technically, because it's it, it had a first episode premiere in November because of a convention or whatever. So it was actually on the fall chart and not the winter chart. Thanks, my anime list. Anyway, watched the first episode of this, and I guess maybe my uh, expectations were... I don't know, maybe I was more impressed because I went into it blind, but I liked it a lot. I actually thought that was a really, really fun first episode. The main concept is that... There is a, uh, there are these, there are 52 cards, like a regular 52 card deck, and it's not like super special cards or anything, like an actual deck of playing cards, like the main character has the two of spades in his possession, okay? And each card has some kind of unique ability that so far hasn't really been explained. All it means is that each card does something specific, and each of them has some really, really huge, like, huge crazy powers like the first guy you get you, you kind of see it um with this one guy who's just who who wins the like the ultimate billion dollar jackpot at the casino because he just constantly wins well, it's because he's wearing these gloves which were i don't know one of the cards and then he uh he gets taken into the back of the casino someone has um this other card that allows him to turn things into marbles like it's really it's like anything he comes into contact with will turn into marbles. Like, it will literally explode into marbles, and then he uses them like bullets from a gun, and it was actually, it was fucking sick, honestly. Um, so, yeah, actually really interested in this. I, I like shonen anime that have a specific set of powers like that, and I don't know, it, it, it could make for some really, really interesting rules. Like, are we going to see people have multiple cards at the same time, and will that create new effects? I feel like that very possible, but I really like, I really like it when people have, like, a, a, a specific power that's, like, easy to explain, and it's not that one power is stronger than another, it's just the way that someone is supposed to use it. Kind of like JoJo, honestly. It's like, it's like the, the stands in JoJo. It's not like one person has the best stand, it's just that the way you use your stand, it, it could be the best, depending on, um, how you, uh, mess around with it. So, yeah, honestly, like this a lot. Uh, main character is, all right, enjoyable enough. Uh, he's a pickpocket, uh, and that's about it. He lives in an orphanage, which is going to be shut down because the building is going to be demoed and then put into, uh, put, uh, they're going to build an apartment complex in it. Um, something interesting about this anime is that it, it, it doesn't take place in a real place. Like, it's, everything's, like, fictional, but it seems very American because, <coughs> excuse me, the <coughs> the main character goes to essentially Vegas. Like they even have the, the 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 diamond sign that usually says "Welcome to Las Vegas," and it's just like, "Oh, welcome to this place instead." Um, but like everyone's driving cars and shit like that. The main character gets a hot dog early on. It's like it's like he's it's like he's in New York in the first part of the episode, and then he goes to Vegas. But everything has a different name, so I don't know. Um, but I thought that was interesting, and also the the, the concept of like, a, a building, like, an orphanage being demolished for some other, like, mass public housing unit just seems like a very American thing. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe... That probably happens everywhere, right? But I just don't... I haven't seen this plot point in anime uh, much, if at all. So, yeah. Interesting little thing about the world. But, yeah, looking forward to this anime. Um, actually pretty good and pretty fun. All right. Watch the first episode of Vinland Saga season two, and it was fucking awesome. It was seriously really, really cool. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was because I remember the first season of Vinland Saga didn't exactly have the best start, uh, or at least not the best first episode. It was actually um. Now that I think about it. They released all th they they released three episodes all at once when it first came out. So, uh, yeah, and it was, it was kind of like the, the, the first episode was a three-part thing. Um, but this first episode of the second season, like, they don't fuck around. They instantly give you a really, really dramatic intro with this guy, Einar, who is a new character. You actually really don't see the main character of, of the, the whole series until at the very end when he finally shows up, although he is mentioned 
a little bit. So um, it's kind of like the series is doing a bit of a reset, which makes sense in the context of the first season because even though Torfinn is the main character of the fur of of the overall series, he doesn't often feel like the main character of the first season. It feels like um, Ashalad is more of the main character of that season. That's how I perceive it. Anyway, I see. I think that the first season was all about like his particular story. And Torfinn is just mostly just there, honestly. Um, so it kind of makes sense for that story to be over. And now it's like, oh, okay, well, it's harder. Like, 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 there isn't really anywhere to go immediately beyond there. So, yeah, it does seem like there was a long time skip and a lot of stuff has happened since then. Uh, but the first, this new, uh, this new character, I mean, I can't say I'm, like, into him so far. It's more just that the anime has given us his circumstance, which is extremely brutal, his, cause at first he's, uh, just chilling with his sister and his mother, and, and he's talking about how he rebuilt the farm that they, uh, that they live upon. Um, even though his dad was killed in, I don't know, something, so, something happened, his dad died, the farm burned down, um, but he was able to rebuild it, and now they're able to go on living, and then they get attacked by Vikings, and the rest of his family dies and he gets sold as a slave. It's a fucking brutal, dude. It's a brutal series. People have compared this to Berserk with the brutality. People basically say it's just like Berserk, but more Viking coded. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's uncomfortable to watch. It really is. The shit that happens to this dude, it's like, damn, fuck, bro. Um, yeah, it's like, when when is this guy ever going to get a break? So, um... Yeah, that's about it, though. Uh, just really, really good, though. Just really, re really, really good. Just really dramatic. Um, the, the soundtrack was the thing that stood out to me the most. The soundtrack overall is freaking awesome. It's beautiful, um, especially at the end when they reveal uh, the new farm that this guy is working on. I'm really excited for this because we are in the farmland saga of uh, this series, which is... By many accounts, the best part of the Vinland Saga. Like, this is, this is like the golden age of Vinland Saga. As, as, uh, you know, kind of comparing it to Berserk again. But, yeah, people say this is the best arc of the whole manga. And we're getting, it adapt we're getting an adaptation of it now. Um, but, yeah. And also, uh, there was a studio change. Studio Wit did the first season. MAPPA did the se is doing this second season. Because what, what, isn't, what isn't MAPPA doing at this point? And, honestly, I can't say there was a... Much of a change, not that I remember. I don't recall the first season having like a this this distinct style. Although I will say, watching this kind of made me think of Attack on Titan. Like it honestly kind of looks like Attack on Titan now. Maybe that was the case in the first season. I don't know, um, but I don't think there was a huge. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a huge stylistic shift that's going to take some time to get adjusted to. I will say. And, and this was kind of uh, the case of the first season as, season as well. It doesn't look great. Like, like, it really doesn't, it just looks alright. It's like average looking anime, honestly, which I know some people are upset about because, you know, this is a classic manga, well, almost classic. It, start, it started in 2005, so it's not maybe old enough to be a classic, but, you know, very highly respected manga. Um, but it's fine, like, uh, like it, it's whatever. Um, it still looks alright, uh, and again, the soundtrack was pretty excellent, and most importantly, the stories that are being told are really, really good. The first episode, um, in a way, was kind of like a self-contained story, and like I said, kind of a reset for the whole series, so it's almost like you could watch this season without uh, really knowing what goes on, what happened to the first season, although I wouldn't recommend that, because the first season is really good, but yeah, Vinland Saga, season two, good, I liked it. Shout out to a friend who reminded me I should let this, uh, Go on the record. Vinland Saga does have very, very good backgrounds. Thank you, Pogli, for, uh, for, or Poggy Man, for, uh, uh, reminding me of that. And also the, the OP, um, I, for, I, I thought about mentioning this, I, I just kind of didn't, um, but the OP is also very, very good, which is great because I didn't really like the OPs of the first season all that much. Um, I know people, like, nut over Mukanjo, and I actually like that song a lot, but that OP is not good. And then Dark Crow is, like, it's an okay song, but it just uses clips from the, the show. Um, but the OP in this one was freaking awesome. It's beautiful. Uh, very, like, slow and dramatic, but really, really cool. And the ED is also really great. I think Aimer does the ED, so you kind of get that really dramatic 
uh, wispy Aimer vocal, um, but it's great. Yeah, good, good OP, good ED, ED uh, great backgrounds, uh, despite what I said about the anime looking just kind of okay. Okay, what the hell is this show called that I just watched? Uh, I gotta find it. I, it has a long title, I don't know. The Cool Guy and His Coworker, or some shit like that. Korizoku se danshi to cool na dorio joshi. The Ice Guy and His Cool Female Colleague. That's what I just watched. Um, watch the first episode of that. There might be a second episode out um, by this point. I need to get this. Um, am I going to watch more of it? I don't know. The thing is, I don't know if this was a bad series or anything, but it definitely didn't appeal to me all that much. This might... I don't want to say this as like a negative thing, because this isn't, this isn't a problem. It's not like I, I hated it for this reason. If anything, it just makes me kind of um, understand that out. It makes me understand a little more like who it's for and who it's by. Um, this anime has big webcomic energy to it. And I do believe it is a webcomic. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious that's a webcomic. And I don't know how exactly to describe it, but I think webcomic series that get adapted into anime, it's pretty clear, like, who they're made by and for. Like, clearly this is made by some kind of socially awkward weirdo who spends a lot of time on the internet. Made for other socially awkward weirdos who spend a lot of time on the internet. Uh, I guess like me. But it's also a lot more female-coded, um, at least in this particular example. So the two main things that I was thinking of when I was watching this series, or watching this first episode, were Hori Mia. And Wotakoi. I feel like th that's a cross... It, this show's kind of like a cross between the two. Like, the main character... I actually don't really know who the main character... I guess the main character is the guy, the ice guy. But I I don't actually know. It, it feels like it was written more from the perspective of the girl. Who's just kind of this emotionally distant, quiet girl with nothing interesting about her. And then she meets this guy who's, um, who descended from an ice woman, like a, a like an ice yokai or some shit like that. In this world, there is some light supernatural stuff that just kind of exists and everyone has just accepted it. So, um, these two go to work at this company. There's someone else who works there who, um, came from a fox spirit. So, there's some light supernatural stuff. The main thing is that the guy, um, like, he, he turns into ice when he becomes uh, nervous. Like, he, like when she first meets him, his feet are frozen to the ground because he's so nervous about his first day at the job. Now, why is her tail all, all bushy? Look how bushy her tail is. She's got a big bushy tail. I don't know what her problem is. Now, well, here, here, come on. Then what you want? Ew. Sneeze on me. Bless you. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, the main girl is just, like, not interesting. And the guy, he, he he's like this kind of, uh, he, he kind of has this emo code to him, sort of. He also talks in these ways that seem, like, really deep. Like, I post on Twitter that <laughs> this kind of seems like an anime aesthetic kind of anime. Because <laughs> the guy says, the guy talks about how he can't have... Uh, plants in his house or anything like that because of the ice that he creates, the, the hostile environment that he can create just by being himself. So he says, I love flowers, but they'll never love me back. And I'm like, oh my god, this is fucking, this is for 14 year olds, honestly. This is very, I'm 14 and this is deep. There were some other lines kind of like that. And I don't know, both the characters are just kind of weird and awkward. And honestly, not very fun to watch. I did not really enjoy watching either of them. Um, if you want a workplace comedy, watch Wotakoi. Um, Wotakoi is also... A, Wotakoi and Horimiya are both webcomics, or at least have webcomic origins, which is kind of why I was comparing them um, so heavily. But um, yeah, workplace comedy, watch Wotakoi. Um, it, it also... I think this anime is also going to have a second couple, because there's the guy... Okay, you're messing with my hair. Get down. Get off of me! Because the fox spirit lady 
was with this other normal guy. So there's going to be like a supernatural woman with a normal guy. And then there's the supernatural guy with the normal woman in this anime. I think that's what is going to happen. So it's like Wotakoi, but with none of the fun characters of Wotakoi. And it's like Horimiya, but with none of the fun characters of Horimiya, honestly. Um, but like I said, it, it, it kind of, it, it's big webcomic energy. It's clearly made by a particular individual for other particular individuals. So if you're like a, an awkward, reclusive female uh, who's very shut in, but are attracted to, but is attracted to shy guys who are some, who are kind of as awkward as you, then I guess this is the anime for you. Watch this. You'll love it. I might watch more of this. Um, because again, I didn't hate it, but I also don't really think there's anything for me. So I don't know. On the fence about it. Didn't love it, but it wasn't terrible. All right. I watched this anime called Kubo San Wa Mob Wo Yurusadai, aka Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible. It's an anime that's kind of a wholesome romance with a. I don't know if Manic Pixie Dream Girl is necessarily the right term for it. She's not manic. She's not like a super crazy weirdo. But she's kind of like that dream girl that I think a lot of guys wish they had. She's just very cute. She's soft-spoken. She's nice. Um, she's fairly good-looking. And, um, yeah, she just overall has this very pleasant um, atmosphere to her. Uh, this very pleasant vibe to her. And she's just kind of good at whatever. She's like the the, the uh, ideal student in school, has lots of friends, very social, all that good stuff. And she takes a great interest in the main character, who is extremely unassuming. So much so that that's kind of the, the point of the entire anime, is that this guy is literally so unassuming that... People in his everyday life don't even notice his existence. Like, his own classmates do not know that he exists most of the time. In fact, he says that he has to directly talk to the teacher most days just so that he won't be marked absent. Like, he just has a complete lack of presence and otherwise just no interesting redeeming aspects to him. He's just kind of this boring guy, honestly, um, taken to a bit of an extreme. And then this girl just has a great interest in him for some reason. It's this, uh, it's that kind of, it's a kind of show that I normally wouldn't like. I don't typically like the anime with the, just, nor just the really boring guy that I honestly can't relate to all that much. And then the, the, the dream girl that you know, makes no sense, um, to have an interest in the main character and things like that. I usually don't like that sort of anime. That's why I didn't really like Shiki Morisan last year um and the other thing is that this is a bit of a light teasing show as well uh where this girl she's she, she's called she's constantly trying to get the guy's attention and get him to do stuff to draw attention to himself in a way that kind of messes with him playfully it's not like mean-spirited or anything but the guy kind of takes it like like, 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 he doesn't really understand her, so he's always just, like, wondering what's going on and thinking that he's getting made fun of her and stuff like that. So there's a bit of a, a teasing aspect to it as well. And I don't like teasing anime. I got really old of Takagi-san. I'm not interested in watching Nagatoro. I fucking hate Uzaki-chan. But for whatever reason, I'm okay with this series. Take, take two of these dumbass tropes that I normally am totally sick of, and somehow this one's alright. And there is a reason for this. There's a reason why I like this anime. There's one thing that stands out about it that I really appreciate. Hanakana. Hanakana voices the girl in this anime. And you have to understand, I, I am a, I am a big Hanakana stan... I mean, obviously I'm a Hanakana fan. She voiced my Yuri fucking Sheena. Yes, I'm a Hanakana fan. Um, and the main character of Happy... Why do you think I like Happy Sugar Life so much? Because Hanakana is in it. Um, uh, but but it's been so long since I've heard Hanakana in an anime. Like, she used to be famous for being in every anime that was ever coming out. Alright, she was in 
everything in the 2010s. And for whatever reason, she's almost disappeared. Like, she has been around. She still does stuff for um, uh, Quintuplets. She voices one of the girls in that. Some other series that she's part of. I think Yuki Yuna as a hero had a new thing that she's also a part. She's one of the main characters in that. Like, she's been in stuff. And she has appeared as even main roles from time to time. Like, she's one of the, like, the main girl in Shinka no Mi, which is an anime that's, that has a second season ongoing right now. I even tried watching the first season because she was in it. Dog shit ass fucking anime. I could not be bothered. But she's in it. So she, she's she been getting roles every now and then, but mostly as supporting roles for, like, who the fuck knows what. So this is actually the first time I ever heard her in, like, a main role in, a, in an anime since, I, I actually think it's been since Sing Yesterday for me. Sing fucking, that came out in 2020, it's been three years since I've actually heard this much Hadakana in an anime, I can't believe it, and I'm so happy, she, she still has it, she's so good, she's just so freaking, just everything this character says is delivered with such a, such a musical pleasantness, like, and, and, like, she's just, she's just so great at conveying everything, just, it, it's hard to it's hard to explain, but she's just so great, and listening to her in this anime has been so wonderful, and that's honestly been the thing that I, that was the thing that I enjoyed the most in this anime. The thing is, I don't know how long I'm going to in, continue appreciating this, um, before I, like, get tired of it, because, kind of like I said, I'm not really into these shows very much. The teasing aspect wasn't really an issue, um, that, that doesn't bother me or anything, and, and I don't usually dislike teasing anime specifically for a teasing or anything. Um, it's just other issues. I, I don't like when there's a character who is very, very obviously, like, could not be more obvious about his or her feelings for the other character. Usually her feelings for the main character. And then the main character just has no fucking idea what's going on. The guy just is just completely fucking clueless as to what she's doing. And so... Mob, as the guy is called in this... Uh, really, his name's Shiraishi. I, I guess he's nicknamed Mob sometimes because he's, like, invisible or whatever. Anyway, Shiraishi just doesn't really have a handle on this girl at all and just doesn't understand why she always wants to hang out with him and is always, you know, talking to him and having him do stuff and, and shit like that. And it's like... Like, 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 it, like I can understand not understanding some feelings but again sometimes it gets so obvious and is pushed to such in a, such a degree where it's just like all right just get a fucking move on already i don't want to watch a one-sided relationship for more than six episodes really ideally less than that um so if there's not like a romantic development in this anime i might get tired of it quickly i'll just have to see how it goes. But at least for now, first episode was okay. Maybe they'll introduce other characters that will spice up the series. Um, uh, Kubo, the, the girl, has a really hot sister who showed up at the at the end of the first episode. I would like to see more of her. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Like, no, no big complaints right now, but I do hope it gets better and isn't just an episodic kind of slice of life where nothing ever happens until maybe the last episode. Yeah. But, thumbs up for Hanakana at least. Great to hear from her again. It's been so long. I watched this anime called Reborn to Master the Blade from Hero King to Extraordinary Squire. Female symbol. Um, I watched the first episode of it. I, honestly, the only, there's one reason why it's on my plan to watch, and it's for a dumb reason. It's because I'm just a fan of the light novel artist. Um, the light novel is drawn by an illustrator named Nagu, and if you do enough digging, you'll probably understand why I appreciate this artist so much. Um, so I guess out of respect for them, I wanted to check out this anime. And I will, I guess I'll say that this anime isn't necessarily bad, it's just whatever. It's a, uh, reincarnation sort of anime, um, guy dies of old age, I guess he had already been isekai once before. Like, he's at the end of his isekai life where he got... He's like, he got to rule this kingdom. 
he got to basically do whatever he wanted. He accomplished so much, and everyone loves him. And then, and so the goddess who isekai him in the first place visits him again, and I guess as like a good job of doing whatever he did in his isekai life, he gets to have a wish granted. And so he wishes to be reborn because he thinks, oh, but if I spent my life uh, mastering the blade imagine how great I would be, how much greater I would be. So that's what happens. He gets reborn, and he starts off as a baby. And we're just watching him um, reborn as this girl, uh, just learning stuff, I guess. Um, I, I just want to know, like, what the point of anything is. Like, where are we going? I get, uh, like, uh, like, the point, I guess, is that this person will eventually become super great. But... Like I said, we're, it's just kind of the character learning stuff so far. Um, like a TLDR is that they're the only person who understands magic, and therefore they're better than everyone at everything. I mean, there's one other character who, who uses magic and like appears to be really good. Like they fight a bunch of knights, and they knights can't do shit because this guy knows magic. So the main character is like, oh, I, I understand what's going on, and then she challenges him to a duel, even though she's like five years old at this point. And then she she kicks she kicks his ass and it's like great awesome or something I don't know dude like it's it, it, honestly the show's boring it's just kind of nothing it's just kind of whatever um like like there's nothing necessarily bad about it it's just whatever you've it's a reincarnation series that you've already seen several thousand times at this point I don't know if this one does anything better I would like to see this main character get to a point where they're like really cool and doing cool stuff like this guy said he wanted to do by this goddess but we're at the point where we've got to watch them train and learn things i guess they're going to go to school at some point i mean the character the main character like if you look at the poster the main character is the girl with the giant boobs here um but that's we're not even at that point yet like we're we're starting completely from scratch and just watching all of this shit is boring like it, it's frankly boring like i get it the main character is good at stuff just have them do cool stuff that's all I really care about seeing. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll watch it in another episode because, again, the show didn't bother me. It's just, it's just very whatever. So, yeah. Uh, inoffensive, but good, good for it, I guess. All right, so that was five anime. I'm going to end the video there. I do plan on having one more video either tomorrow or the day after, sometime really soon, uh, for a, a last final part of my impressions. In that one, I'm going to talk about Ars no Kyoju, Ayakashi Triangle, Buddy Daddies, Kind of the Great Snow Sea, and Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Those are the five, the remaining five anime that I had on my plan to watch that uh, I will be watching immediately. Doesn't mean I will, I won't watch anything else in the future or whatever. Just those are the ones that I uh, wanted to watch um, now and that I plan to watch right now. So, um, yeah, that's really about about it. Um, and after that, I'm going to do a um, second episode impressions. Uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, look forward to that. And, uh, and I, I plan on doing the podcast um, sometime at the end of the week. So probably, yeah, hopefully this weekend I'll be able to do that. And, um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, next time.